Hello and welcome to Disneyland's 50th anniversary celebration. For this truly historic event, no ordinary host would do. No, the Disney folks wanted someone who's been here from the beginning. They wanted a household name. A name that means family entertainment. Donald, Donald, calm down. You're just too animated. I'm referring, of course, to me, Steve Martin. Oh, really? Well, I don't remember him calling that show the Donald Duck Club. Now just waddle along. As I was saying, the Disney folks came to me because I began my career right here at the Magic Shop at Disneyland. That's me, Disneyland class of 1960. Magician, prestidigitator, and seller of fake vomit. So young Steve Martin starts performing magic here, and lo and behold, they start calling the place the Magic Kingdom. Coincidence? I don't think so. But right now, I'd like to introduce you to the man who started it all, Walt Disney. Walt, tell us how it all goes. Well, this is the original. Now, this is the original. This is the one from the original show here in Disneyland. And this is a milk room. Yes. So we start out with like a ghost. Yes. 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 The yes. 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 Yes.
I'm translating. Nobody can understand what you're saying. Can't talk. Cannot. Not. I'll show you. Ignore the duck. As I was saying, the land that America saw on my Disneyland television show became But 28,000 showed up. The newspapers predicted the worst for Walter's Park. And only 90 days later, one millionth guest walked through the gate. Disneyland not only survived, it thrived. In others, you'll find some of Disneyland's most important contributors. Nice try, Donald. Many shops have come and gone here over the last 50 years. Gone is the working pharmacy, and gone but not forgotten, my favorite, Hollywood Maxwell's Corset Shop, better known as the Wizard of Bronze. Yes, Disneyland is filled with nostalgia and memories, but that's only part of the magic. Let's not forget fantasy. Hear that? When you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. For Walt, that was the very essence of Fantasyland. Of all the lands, this was closest to Walt's heart. He even placed the Disney family crest right above the castle gate. Fantasyland was created by the same artist who created Disney's animated films at the studio. And soon those storybook tales came to life in an orange grove in Anaheim. For the first time, we can step into those worlds and become a part of the adventure. In Adventureland and New Orleans Square, surprises happen all the time. In fact, Disneyland is the only place I can think of where you can be attacked by pirates, frightened by ghosts, and nearly crushed by a giant boulder, while keeping your arms, legs, and feet inside the vehicle at all times. And here's the adventure that started them all. Remote rivers through a treacherous jungle. Could something go horribly wrong? Only a punchline. Over the years, the Jungle Cruise has become a showcase for handsome and witty river guides. Oh no! That big elephant is coming up to us and it looks like he's going to squirt us! Everyone in the back, get down! Don't worry, it never happens. <laughs> <laughs> it was the duck, right? The duck? You know, every time I get all dressed up in my cowboy hat and pearl-handled pistols, I think about the heroes of Frontier. <laughs> you see, Walt believed it was important to pay tribute to the pioneers who blazed a trail across Frontier America. And I agree. Especially when it involves saloon girls and blazing six guns! In Frontierland, you could meet popular Disney heroes of the day, like Davy Crockett and Zorro. For a while, there was an authentic American Indian village. And in the little mining town called Rainbow Ridge, you could board a mine train or pack mule to explore nature's wonderland. 
And then the West got a whole lot wilder. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad was a thrilling addition to Disneyland's growing mountain range. The first peak was the Matterhorn, one of Disneyland's first e-ticket attractions. But the most out of this world mountain of them all is right here in Tomorrowland. When Disneyland first opened, Tomorrowland gave us a preview of the amazing futuristic world of 1986. Okay, so the 1980s didn't turn out that way. But Tomorrowland is really about imagining the possibilities of the future. So we got to go to the moon before real astronauts did. We got to travel through the mighty microscope on atomobiles, beyond the realm of normal magnification. Tomorrowland has always been a showcase for new ideas and new inventions, including one of Walt's most famous. Audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. And this technology wasn't just for the birds. Walt's idea got better and, as always, bigger. New wash day marvel, it takes only five hours. Not only could these robotic performers talk and act, they could jam. Hit it, boys! Thank you. 